I've spent a lot of hours figuring out how to edit videos like this one that you're watching in an efficient way that doesn't involve jumping through hoops or completely tiring myself out by the end of the day. Obviously, learning how to edit and what works for you is personal, and you do have to go through the trenches to find that flow, but I'm gonna share with you the five things that I wish I had known before I started editing, and hopefully it'll make the learning curve just a little bit easier for you. And then I'm gonna show you an amazing web-based software that's really gonna help you learn the foundation of video editing and will actually streamline your process. So make sure to stick around for that. First things first, learn how to organize your content. Figure out a system that works for you. Learning how to organize your content in an efficient way takes a lot of trial and error. Here's how I organize everything for creating talking head videos, so the type of video that you're watching right now, but this can really be adapted to fit your video type, but this should at least give you a starting point. So I store all of my content on Dropbox and on an external hard drive. I'll get to storing files next, but within my Dropbox account, I have a bunch of different folders. I have a YouTube videos folder. All of these are separated by video. And here you'll see I have a template folder that I can duplicate for every new YouTube video that I create. I always start the name with a number so that they all stay in order of when they were created. So within this templates folder, this is my starting point for all videos. I have an assets folder, so things like screen shares and stock footage and GIFs related to this specific video would go in here. I also have a footage folder, so this is where all of the raw footage goes. Audio holds all raw audio, if it was recorded separately from my footage, and any music specific to this video. I have project files here with my Audition project files and my Adobe Premiere project files. So this is actually a Premiere template that I set up that helps me get started when it comes to the actual editing part. So this project file has things like my brand colors, brand fonts, motion graphics, sequences set up, etc. It's essentially set up so I can just import my footage and go at it. And then I have my exports, so this is where any exported videos will go. Within my Dropbox account, I also have a YouTube assets folder. This is where any content goes that I will reuse. So things like generic stock footage, screen shares that are reusable, B-roll that's reusable, even stock music. This YouTube assets folder stays stored on my computer, whereas each finished YouTube video gets uploaded to the cloud. Having content organized and templated like this takes a little bit of time initially, but it's going to save you so much time in the long run. I mentioned that all of my videos are on Dropbox and they're also on an external hard drive. Something that I didn't really get when I was starting out is that your computer is really meant to act as just the machine to get stuff done. You wanna keep the amount of files and storage that you use to a minimum to keep your computer working properly. So when you're editing, these are large files, right? You can work on content that is stored on your computer and then immediately upload all of those files to the cloud when you're done editing so that it's saved in cyberspace. <laughs> or you can edit directly off of files on an external hard drive. I'm gonna tell you the horror story that I learned this from. When I started working at Riverside, I was figuring out all of this video editing stuff, right? I was working off a hard drive, not very organized, I was still learning, and one day my hard drive just stopped working. Wouldn't connect to the computer, it was just never to be seen again. So I brought it into a guy to fix it because all of my work stuff was on there and all of my beloved first podcast episodes were on there. Even some important documents that I had. It was going to cost me over a thousand dollars to fix. So I had to make the decision of, do I let all of my previous YouTube videos and all of my previous podcast episodes just be erased? Or do I fork up a thousand dollars for it? I chose just to move on and figure out a better storage solution going forward. So I got a Dropbox account. And before I upload each video and its assets to the cloud using Dropbox, I also copy a version over to an external hard drive. So now I have everything backed up twice, and now you can learn from my mistakes and avoid it because it really sucks. Here's a question to ask yourself before diving into editing. Do I really know how to film the kind of content that I want? It is very important to learn how to film that properly first. This may seem obvious, but do you know how many headaches I had trying to edit bad video in post-production? Bad framing and blurring and lighting is not easily fixable in post, especially if you're a beginner. 
Yeah, you can make some minor edits and fixes to things like shadows and lighting, but you're not going to be able to take a poorly recorded video and make it look professional. Focus some time on learning the right camera settings and lighting placement, and maybe take a course somewhere like Skillshare before you dive into editing. You're going to have a lot more fun editing content that you're proud of versus content that you're disappointed in, and it's going to save you a lot of time. Audio, on the other hand, there are tons of AI tools out there to fix your audio after recording. I'll show you the one that I recommend shortly. Depending on the style of editing you have to do, consider the background of your video. You'll notice that in this set, I have a blank side for adding text or GIFs or videos over without the background being distracting from those additional assets. Same thing goes in this set. I have a blank space right here. So think about the compositions of your frames when you're setting up your set and your framing for filming. When it comes to software, of course you can dive right into using advanced programs like Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere, but do you really have to? There are so many online video editors out there that are easy to learn because they only include the tools that you're gonna need to get started. Let's take a look at Riverside. So this is what you would see when you log into the platform. You would create a new studio for your category of videos. So this could be like YouTube videos or video podcast episodes. You would create that studio with this plus button right here. And then once your studio is created, you can upload the video that you want to edit right here. You can also get a high quality recording using the recording studio by selecting this record button. This platform is web-based and you can use any equipment that you'd like to use. You just attach it to your computer. You can invite other people to record with you and you can capture high quality video and audio when you're done recording. You'll be given a high quality recording that you can then edit on the platform. When you go into that recording, you can generate magic audio right here, which is going to use AI to enhance your audio into a polished professional sound. It's going to make you sound as if you recorded in a studio. So that will save you a huge headache in post-production if you do have messy audio. If you head up to this purple edit button, create new edit. This is the Riverside editor and it is so much easier to learn than those advanced video editing softwares because it has so many less tools. It only has the ones that you really need. So you can delete parts using the text-based editor. You can use these AI producer tools to do things like remove filler words or silences. You can add content like text overlays, captions, even image overlays. You can also add intros and outros. And you can even change the aspect ratio for various social media platforms. If this interests you, we have a whole video walking you through how to edit videos in the Riverside editor and I will link that above for you. But basically, using a platform like Riverside is going to streamline the recording and editing workflow, save all of your raw footage and edited content to the cloud automatically, and it has a whole bunch of AI tools and an easy editor that will help make your workflow faster. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and my learnings to make the video editing process easier and more streamlined. If you want to try out Riverside, I will leave a link in the description. And I'm also going to leave a playlist of videos right here to help you get started. And if you want to know some more video editing tips and tricks, because I know that's what you're in the mood for, I'm going to leave a video right here for you to watch next. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to hang out again, I will be here every single week. So make sure to hit subscribe and stick around. My name is Bridget O'Rourke. Keep creating and I'll see you next time.